right, welcome back. Um, last week, what we tried to do together was tie together the loose ends so as to bring a harmony between three things. We tried to bring a harmony between the documents and, and those are the, the material that you have. Uh, documents would be the stuff that I give you. We call it stuff, the Bible, um, writings, okay? And we, we tried to, to, to connect a harmony between these things that we've read and the human body, what goes on inside of you, the brain. And basically, we've centered there. And then the universe. And we've tried to see, is there any connection? And, and in working in, in the documents, I'll go along with you, but we've, we've been able to, to, to make some pretty good connections that I think justify continued observation and, and, and thinking. For documents, we used in the Bible, we used the book of Revelation, and we used the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we found some very, very interesting things. Inside of our body, we considered the fornix of the brain, the pineal gland of the brain, the 12 cranial nerves. So in other words, what I'm telling you is that we've been able to make a connection between the documents in the Bible, the anatomy, things such as Stedman's Medical Dictionary. And then uh, when we looked at that, we looked in the universe, and we were able to see uh, a connection with supernova. We'll call it SN 1987A, uh, the constellation Fornax, and as the, as the pineal gland of the brain, and the galaxy 4555. And so, you know, we, we spent a lot of time on this, but I think I've gotten some good circumstantial evidence that the documents that we've been reading in Revelation and Daniel and other things co coordinate well with the anatomical things that we have about the fornix of the brain, the pineal gland, and the 12 cranial nerves, and then to attach them to what's going on in the universe today in supernova 1987A and the fornax and galaxy 45. 55, okay? So this is what we're able to do. Now, what I'm proposing to you, which is still at a difficult stage for you to accept, is that 4555 is the location where the intelligence of the, or the people reside. I'm, you know, I'm just to stop beating around the bush and we'll come right out and, and go after it now because you've gotten to that point where I think you're mature enough to accept this. What I'm proposing to you is that 4555 is the location of the galaxy where the people who are directing, directing, who are assigned to direct your affairs and lead you into this evolution live. And they are using, and these are the ones who are providing us with the opening of the information to look at supernova 1987A as the pineal gland that will cause the fire to flow stria pinealis to the fornax in the human brain. There is a straight line called stria pinealis that goes from the pineal gland to the fornix of the brain. In the sky, we now have supernova 1987A, which equates to the pineal gland, and a straight line from there going to the constellation fornax. All right. And so what we're saying is that there is, uh, we've, we've been able to make a connection. But what I would like you to start looking at is that 4555 is the location of intelligent life and where the direction is coming from, uh, bringing us along slowly but crucially to understand what's going to happen in the year 2000, 2002. All right, and in the year 2000, 2002, I'm basing that on the documentation that you have from the scientists from NASA who say that supernova 1987A will cause the center eye to light in 2000 and 2002, okay? Now, we were able to make some reasonable connections when we looked at the book of Daniel <coughs> in the famous story <coughs> of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These were the three people that were thrown into a furnace, 
And then when they looked in, there was a fourth person. And of course, that's obvious mythology. But what was interesting is we were able to make a connection between that story in Daniel of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the furnace as being the constellation Fornax. The constellation Fornax, the word Fornax means furnace. So we looked at that and said, OK. Uh, and then we were able to equate Fornax to the gland Fornix, which is located in the center of the human brain and connected to the pineal gland. You know, and I'm doing a, a kind of a review here. And you, you have to look at some of these other tapes and look at some of this other stuff to go and spend the time that it takes. But still, you'll be able to walk out of here today understanding re reasonably what I'm talking about. It's not going to take you a, <coughs> a difficult time. But what happened, it allowed us to pursue Supernova 1987A as the source of the fire. So let's, let's get to that. What I'm saying happens here. <laughs> and what you have in the documentation is that the pineal gland of the brain, which is the single eye, all right, there is a straight line called stria pinealis in your brain. I'm talking about in your brain. The energy goes off of stria pinealis and hits the fornix of the brain, which is the vault or the oven or the furnace. Okay. From, uh, from the fornix comes a, an energy called four amen. We'll go with that. But the energy rises up the spine, hits the pineal gland, and then the energy that rises is the solar plexus energy, which is the fire from the bottom hitting the eye, which then travels up the straight line to the fornix. What I'm proposing to you is that what is going on in the sky right now, <coughs> discovered by Hubble, is supernova 1987A, which I am proposing to you is a uh, pineal gland it equates to the pineal gland of the brain, but it's in the universe, which, of course, is that, which is the single eye, which has been on the front page of National Geographic and all of the various newspapers and so forth and so on. That's the third eye. That's the single eye. And I'm proposing to you that this is the fornax. Now, I, I'm proposing to you that that is the pineal. That's the third eye. So supernova 1987A would equate with the pineal. And then we found, as, as I'll show you later, a straight line that goes from supernova to the constellation Fornax, which you also have in your material. If, in meditation, the solar plexus fire inside of you causes the pineal to light the Fornix, and amen comes out of there and causes enlightenment inside of your head, what I am proposing to you is that then the pineal, which is supernova 1987A, will then send this energy to the constellation Fornax, which will cause the furnace to light. And then the same thing will occur as occurred in the Bible story, which is the myth of this, that it was the three becomes four. <coughs> that which is the earth part of us is joined by that which is the quote unquote heaven part of us. So a lot of exciting things happening between now and the year 2000. And of course, as we understand, we're not waiting for new age prophets or religious prophets to tell us about this. The, the, the time of 2000 has been predicted by the scientists. What happened was supernova 1987A was a star. As a star 166,000 years ago, it emitted this tremendous gas cloud, which became what you see now as supernova 1987A. In 1987, this star had gotten bigger and bigger, and, bigger, and it exploded in 1987. Now the scientists say that the debris from the explosion is going to hit that center eye and light it and cause the light to actually consume the Earth and sometime between now and the year 2002 when it will be completely lit. So I mean, this is not something we talk about as a, as a prophecy or something. This is a scientific fact, and you have it in the material that I gave you. All right? So this is what we're looking. <laughs> now the second thing that we, we were talking about was 4555. And if you remember, uh, as we looked in the book of Daniel, we read about the furnace and the so forth and the three becoming four. We said, OK, the book of Daniel, we've got a furnace there in which something amazing happens. And now we've got in the sky, we've got uh, a furnace 
fornax, which is we were attaching to the supernova. <coughs> but something happened right after the furnace incident. Something occurred. In the story, a hand without an arm comes into this room. And the hand starts writing on the wall. And the hand writes this word, mene, mene. In Hebrew and in Greek, two languages, the letters have numerical values intentionally to convey messages. In the Hebrew, the letters M have a numerical value of 40. The letter E has a value of 5. The letter N has a numerical value of 50. The letter E, 5, 45, 55. This was very significant. <coughs> so I said, whoa, you know, look at here. We've gotten what we feel is some evidence. And, and remember something. I'm not up here proving anything to anybody. I'm not up here telling you this is the way anything is. I'm saying, this is interesting. Let's look at this. Let's put this under the microscope. Let's consider these things. There's a lot more that's been written down by the mythologists and the ancient people than meet the eye of any, any church because they don't understand these things. And once you start taking what's written, connected to what goes on inside of your body, and then connected to what goes on in, in the universe, you start to see a cohesion. You start to see a harmony. And so here we looked at 4555. <laughs> we found that 4555 is a galaxy in the constellation Coma, which is mother and child in the zodiacal sign Virgo. And so then we see the, the uh, scripture that says, Behold, a virgin. The Lord will give a sign a virgin shall conceive. So out of the virgin, out of Virgo, comes this 4555. And here, where we've connected the furnace and fornax and all of this business, the next thing in the next scripture, many, many, and the number is 4555. <laughs> so, you know, that's interesting. And then I showed you something very amazing. To me, it was very amazing. Because I, oh, how do I say these things? I know about people of 4555. You know, just don't worry about that right now, but I do. Okay, so, so. But how, how do I, you know, how, I can't stand up here and tell you. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I understand that. I totally understand that. But let's say I do. Let's say that I'm looking for some confirmation from somebody up there. Hey, you know, somebody up there, you know, am I, am I on the right track? Am I telling these people the right thing? I mean, is this really because I, <coughs> I'm encased inside of a human brain and I don't know if, if the things that I'm saying, I mean, you know, give me some document, give me something to, I mean, you know, you've done that when you used to go through the fundamentalist church. Oh, God, do this and I'll believe you or something like that, you know. But, you know, give me the new car and I'll never smoke again, you know, and all this kind of a stuff, you know. So I sit here and I'm saying, you know, how, could I get some documentation that this is correct? Two days after April 5th, when we made the connection between 45, 55, and uh, all of this material, I felt very good about that, but still I'm walking out of here. <clears throat> My job, one of the jobs I have in, in the cable company I work with is that I'm the compliance officer for the cable company, and one of the jobs I have this year was we had to get all of our towers, our antenna towers, registered. Any tower over 200 feet had to be registered with the Federal Communications Commission and the um, Federal Aeronautics Administration, and that was my job. So I was in our Burlington system, and one of our engineers was there, and he said to me, Bill, he said, uh, you were in, in the Bricktown system for 22 years. I said, yeah. He said, well, I, I want you to look over their antenna, the FAA registration certificate, and take a look at it. And I said, okay, uh, I'll do that. And he showed it to me. And I said, why did you show this to me? He said, well, I, I just wanted you to see it. How many were here last week? You've seen this, okay? What I'd like for all of you who were not here last week, understand this is the tower where I worked for 22 years. Two days after we made the connection with 4555, this, which is a Federal Aviation Administration document, was handed to me. I can't make a copy of it because it's, it's private and it's owned. It's privileged information. But anybody who has not seen this, would you please come up here? Because I want to show it to you. All right? 
I want to show you the, uh, would you put that on, on pause? I want to show you the latitude of that. And now? Okay, what with the first one, we just paused a minute, and they took a look at the fact that the latitude on this antenna tower that I worked at 22 years and never knew was given to me two days after we made the contact here at 4555 that the latitude in Bricktown, now it's not the tower, don't worry, it's, it's the location of 55. Yeah, okay, so it was another big who are about to come upon this earth. <laughs> and, and, and I told you, and I mean, I can't, you know, I know, you have a right to walk out of here and say, but I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Isn't it pretty good? That's pretty good. Now, and, and I told you, I told you about this stuff for years, and I told you that they're going to walk through that door. I hope you're here the day that they do. You're going to let us know when they're coming? So you're yeah. here? I will. <laughs> but anyhow, you know, and that's very, that's very strange. But you see, that wouldn't be so difficult, would it? If I said to you, I have a friend in Australia, and these guys are coming to visit, and they're going to be here, you wouldn't have any problem with that. But, but we've created this monster in our head that people who live on other dimensions, on other planets, are some kind of aliens, which they're not. They're just people who live in a different neighborhood. Who are your beings. Okay. So you saw that. And then last week I introduced a harmony to you built upon your breath <coughs> that, you know, also was quite amazing. And I'll go over that with you a little while. The point that I want to make is that the road we are following is the most prudent way that I could possibly conceive of looking at either religion or religious things or spiritual things. I had to find a prudent way to look at this so that I could somehow say, this book has some relevance, and our bodies are connected to it, and the universe, and we're all connected together. There's a reasonable connection between what's going on in the sky, what's going on inside of us, and what's written on paper. Okay. So I think we, we, we've kind of shown this to be true. Now, let me, let me tell you what's happening right where you're sitting here. The intelligence of 4555 is allowing those and working through the people of science to gradually introduce you to them. You can't all of a sudden say, here they come, because, you know, the first thing that would happen would be you'd have people on this earth uh, arming their missiles and getting ready to shoot things down, and, you know, because we're, we're you know, that's, that's our nature, that, which is about to change. So you have to be taken very carefully. We went a few years or a few months ago, and they said they found something on a rock that looks like it might have life in it. It might have come from Mars, and all. Everybody's, you know, all of these things gradually, one thing after the other. I don't know how many of you had an opportunity this week to look at, on the Esbury Park Press on April 22nd, a front page article which said, "Life on the Far Side," and it's a scientific article. And it comes out of astronomical Keck number two observer observatory in Hawaii. And let me just read. As you see, you get closer to them getting to a point where you start to accept this. Signs of a new family of planets orbiting a distant star are the clearest evidence yet of worlds forming beyond our solar system and suggest that planets where life could evolve may exist throughout the universe. That's just a little push, yeah? See? They get you to agree. See, not with religious people, with scientists saying, hey, yeah, yeah this could possibly be. You know? Thanks. So when it happens, you're getting ready. The astronomers found a donut-shaped disk of dust rotating around a star 220 light years away. The hole in the donut may have been caused by the birth of planets. A solar system like our own is being constructed in the middle of this disk. Now, listen to that. A solar system like our own is being constructed. People are going to live there. Now, when they live there, who are going to be the aliens from outer space and other planets who are going to come to help them? <laughs> Certainly. In the same way that Lord, we're looking to 4555, they will be looking to us, or maybe a less developed, you know, depends on the period of evolution, 
Nature suggests that planets may be very common throughout the universe. These disks are thought to be the birthing rooms of planets. He said new and highly sensitive instruments are allowing astronomers to move from just speculating about planets forming to actually seeing them. They're about ready to launch these new cameras, which they don't have to worry about vibrations. They'll be able to see these new planets as they're formed. There will be, Hartman said that over the next few years, there will be many new planetary families discovered outside the solar system. Get ready? Yeah, get close, isn't it? Eight, um, telescopes determined the dust about HR 4796 existed in the thin outer ring, and between this ring and the star, there was an empty cavity. It's believed this cavity was carved out by planets that swept up the dust in their birth process. The telltale donut holes in another disk about three other stars, Vega, Fama Hout, and Beta Pectoris. These stars are older than HR 4796, and is believed planetary formation is further along. This is the last paragraph. Wheeler said astronomy <coughs> is on the brink of having the instruments to actually see the blue dots of Earth-like plane biting, uh, orbiting distant planets. And they will actually photograph and take measurements of the oxygen and carbon dioxide gas, which are hallmarks for life. This is the last sentence. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration scientists said the new findings suggest that planet information is not rare. It is a common thing. And this, they feel, has a lot of implications for extraterrestrial intelligence. And they're right. <laughs> but it's, you, you can see as we're starting to come along now to where, you know, we're starting to, to, to reach the point of saying, gosh, you know, this is, this is logical. Now watch what's the next one that came out, all right? So we've got that. Now, when we look at supernova 1987A, <coughs> which I showed you a moment ago, the pineal gland, the single eye in the universe, it is experiencing a kundalini. And, and that, that word is so frightening to so many Christian people. Well, I can understand that because it's Hindu and we've been taught that they're wrong and we're right, you know, so I mean we have to be afraid of things like that. But that kundalini is simply energy from the solar fire in the body rising up the spine, impacting the pineal gland of the brain, racing to the right side, to the fornix, and it causes this enlightenment. Well, this is what's happening now. The fire is racing to the center eye of supernova 1987A. As you see, this ring here is starting to go on fire now. And so we have, happening in the sky, the very same thing <laughs> that happens in your head for the pineal gland, do you see? The fire from the pineal, which in your head follows something called stria pinealis, which is a straight line to the fornix, is now being seen in supernova 1987. If you look at uh, open your material I gave you to page 91. In page 91, you'll see that center part of uh, supernova 1987A on fire. And, and, and the article says, Deep Space Show gets even better. A celestial ring of fire. Its light should intensify over the next decade. We are beginning to see the hammer hitting the bell. This is something we can see happening in our lifetime, like you've never seen happen before. And so this is something that's occurring. The pineal gland of God, the center eye, which we're calling supernova 1987A, is on fire. It's on fire. And what we've been doing is connecting that, this third eye, to your third eye. When your third eye is on fire, what it like, and then we macrocosm that up to the third eye, supernova 1987A, which is on fire. Now, we expect this to occur between now and the year 2000. <laughs> and it's an interesting thing, you know. Uh, but, but, but let me show you something, first of all, and, and I skipped over this, and I shouldn't skip over it. When we talk about this thing called kundalini, which is the fire rising from the solar plexus up through seven chakras, they call them, which are nerve centers in the spine, impacting the pineal gland and throwing open the right hemisphere of the brain. And very, very important for you to realize this is not a Hindu alone idea. This is in the Christian Bible. It's in the book of Revelation. 
It's on page 1005 of those Bibles you have there. And on page 1005 in the book of Revelation, it says, And I saw in the right hand, which is the right hemisphere of the brain, of him that sat on the throne, which is the highest consciousness, a book, which is the book of life, written within, within you, and on the back side, that's the spine, sealed with seven seals. The seven seals of the book of Revelation are the seven chakras of the hinge of It's the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. So there's no reason for people to say, well, you know, I'm not into that Hindu stuff. Okay, the heck with the Hindu stuff. How about the Christian stuff? It's the same stuff. And those seven seals, those seven chakras, are the seven months between September and May when the sun moves in its trajectory up into the point of, of, uh, of, 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 of an earthly kundalini when we pass over from winter to spring. All of these things become new. And we expect this to happen between now and the year 2000. Why? Because some New Age prophet said it? I don't listen to New Age prophets. I really don't. I have as much... I'm not going to say anything because some people are in there. But I don't... I just, just let it go at that. I don't listen to them. I don't, I, that's not where I get my information. Look on page 99 of the stuff I gave you. And it comes from the Hubble Space Telescope News. And it says that the debris is expected to collide with the inner ring as early as the year 2002. I honestly believe it will be a little earlier than that. And this will light up all of the dark nebulosity surrounding the supernova, providing new... received a call, or I got an email, from someone who found it curious, because the pineal gland of the brain, okay, in the center of the brain, is attached at the, at the, at the third ventricle to the hippocampus. The hippocampus of the brain is the place of memory. In the hippocampus of the brain is something called Amon's horn. Amon's horn is the name of an Egyptian deity whose symbol is the rain. And this person thought, you see, you know, she said, you know what she said is interesting? That computer experts all over the world are going crazy because in the year 2000, RAM, computer RAM, is not set up for the date change. In other words, 1999 is fine. But once you get to 2000, it's going to throw everything into chaos. In other words, the memory, what's going to happen to it? So as we're concerned about what's going to happen to the memory of the computers in the year 2000, are we also concerned what's going to happen to the memory in here? The same thing is going to happen. I thought it was an interesting point, something else to consider, something else to think about. What I'm also looking at is because of the fourth person who came out of the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is that what I'm looking for is a fourth ring. If you see the fourth ring, that'll be like 45, 55 years later if it happens. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. But, you know, consider looking for that. This indeed is everything, everything that the world has ever been. Do you know you have people going to church today, and they're all there, and they've got robes on, and they've got stained glass, and they're all waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. What do you do? You do it. It's this. And it's happening. And who is the guy in the Bible that said, if your eye be single, your body will fall white? In Matthew 6, 22, Jesus Christ said, if your eye be single, your body will fall white. He's the guy. Who's the guy say? Who did they say, behold, heaven opened, and I saw a white horse, and Jesus sat upon him there. Jesus Christ. What's it say in Revelation 19, 11? The white horse. What did they find the first planet? Orbiting the sun that was a twin of ours in October 1995 in Switzerland. Pegasus, the white horse. All of these things. All of these things have come true. And yet, if I was to mention this dynasty, I'm a cult leader, stay away from it. And I'm glad they do. And now they do. They didn't used to. And they didn't know that I knew what I was talking about. They would be all over this. Now... There was a statement that I read when, when I think about this Albert finding supernova 
finding Fornax, the Hubble, and all of these things going on in the sky, and finding out that they have a connection to the things that go on inside of a body. I read something by Carl Jung, and he was talking about I Ching, which is a Chinese thing. And this is what he said. He said, the I Ching does not offer itself with proofs and results. It does not vaunt itself, nor is it easy to approach. Like a part of nature, it waits until it is discovered. And this is what's happening. All of these things have been waiting for us out there. They didn't just come. They've been waiting for us to evolve to a point where we could see them. And so now here we've discovered this wonder taught to us in books, including the Bible. And we've connected these things to our bodies. We've connected these things to the universe. And we wait, and we wait until this growth and this fulfillment of the light coming down upon the earth in this t year 2000 or whatever to totally throw by a magnetic radi uh, magne magnetism, throw open the gates in the brain to, to make the human beings upon this earth think and see and understand things differently than the violent, competitive ways that we've always looked. So we look, then we, we use the book of Daniel and Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we were able to come up with the furnace, didn't we? I, you know, I, I can do all this stuff, but I can't spell. I, don't, I never understood. Okay. But we, we come up with the furnace, and then we come up with the fornix in the brain, and then we come up with the fornax. Wow. And that was good. And that took, well, here we got that straight line, but we got something hanging down here. We've got the supernova 1987A, which is the pineal gland, the single eye, the brain. Something would have to, what's was a connection to that? You see, this fornax is the constellation. Well, the symbol that equates to the pineal gland of the brain in astrological terms, astronomical terms, is Leo, which is the seventh, the pineal. You know? So then Leo would be connected also to the supernova 1987A as a symbol. You know? So it, it, it's interesting. And, and what, you know what I found? What I really found was interesting was looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the furnace. I took care of the fornax. And then I turned a few pages, and I saw a guy named Daniel. And he went in <coughs> to the lion's den. And that took care of Leo. So we did have the furnace, and we do have the pineal, and we do have them connected in that one book. And I'll tell you something else. At the end of that book are some great numbers. Great numbers about the end times. So we'll, you know, down the road a little bit, okay? Daniel is cast into the lion's den as the three were put into the furnace. Daniel is put into the lion's den, the seventh, the pineal gland. Look, look at page 88 for just a minute. Uh, you know, on the stuff that I gave you, look at page 88, you know, on, on the discovery of the planets by, since 1995 uh, <coughs> in, in Switzerland. If you look at the top where it says chakra, and you look at the ancient, look at the number seven. You'll see the seventh, which is the pineal, is Sahasara, pineal gland, Leo. You see that? Now, remember when they discovered the planets starting in 1995? And... Look at down where it says at the bottom. Remember the first one was Pegasus? And the next one they just found in Virgo. The third one they found in Ursa. The fourth in Cancer. The fifth in Boots. The sixth in Andromeda. Look where the seventh was found. Leo. And the seventh planet was found in Leo by Dr. George Gatewood of Baltimore, Maryland. Look on the back of page uh, 88. And you'll find his name there. George Gatewood, Baltimore, Maryland. Lalande, 21185. Leo. Right ascension, declination. It's there. See? So the seventh was Leo. So we documented it. The seventh discovery made in the planets of, of new planets was made in 1996, 1997 by Dr. George Gatewood. And the seventh one was Leo, exactly as it is the seventh chakra was Leo. And now we connect this Leo, and we've got Leo connected to the fornax. We've got the pineal gland, and we've got the fornax in the sky. And we've got the pineal gland, and we've got the fornax in the Bible. And we've got the pineal gland supernova 1987A, and we've got the fornax in the constellation. It's there. You know, there's another reason to consider what is contained in the final chapter of Daniel. Because if you look on page 735 of the Bible, and you look on Daniel page, uh, Daniel chapter 12, page 735, Daniel chapter 12, 
and verse 1. And it says on page 7, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since the nation to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Who? See that? <laughs> Do you see that? Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Who's going to be delivered? Those whose names are written in the book. Now, we know it's not a book, don't we? What is the book? And in his right hand, the right hemisphere, I saw a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. How do you know if your name's written in the book? Do you practice meditation? Do you practice meditation free from all instruction, from new age and old age and all of this stuff, just your meditation, you lining up with God? Not, some, not how somebody told you how to meditate, because that's not the way you do it. You meditating the way somebody teaches you how to meditate is like you going to church and believing what somebody said about God. You're finding somebody else's opinion of something that worked for them. That's not going to do. You go into a dark room, you close your eyes, you hold your breath for 10 seconds and wait for God to catch up to you. Meditation is not something you do. Meditation is something that happens when you're doing nothing. You have a unique meditation that is totally different than anybody else in the world. Oh, I know. And there's nothing wrong with going to a doctor who says, you know, visualize this and do all of these things. They're fine. That's wonderful. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> if there's nothing wrong with meditations for bodily functions, that's perfectly fine. That's fine. You want to relax? Go and find out how to do it. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about a meditation to take you one-on-one -on -one to God. That's between you and the universe. And there's only one way. You can't find it, it finds you. And it makes you go into all it asks you to do is go into a dark room with a pineal gland opens. I suggest you hold your breath for 10 seconds, bang, shut down your thoughts, and God will find you. And from then on, you'll start to develop a pathway between you. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying to you. I'm not saying to you that it's not good to go to some place to find meditation if you're going to be <coughs> going there for your health, if you want to go to relax, or you want to go to un overcome some kind of... That's, that's fine, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a one-on-one -on -one contact. And that's a big different thing. Right? And so here it says, your name must be written in the book, which means you must be in to this meditation which carries the energy up from the solar plexus to the pineal gland and up to the fornix. So the book that is referred to matches beautifully with the meditation process or raising the energy up the spine through the seven chakras to the pineal gland. So if indeed this supernova 1987A which is in the sky over your head right now going on fire, is the pineal gland, then if from there the fornax connection would come the unleashing, which we have understood as the seven seals. This is what's going to happen. Did you hear what I said? If this thing is supernova 1987A, is the pineal gland of the universe, in the same way that the one in your head is the pineal gland of your brain, if that's true, then the fire that's going to hit it is going to unleash onto the earth what is called in the book of Revelation the seven seal. This is the thing that David Koresh blew up his building or went on fire and all of those people dying in Waco. That, remember, he was studying the seven seals. If this is what I'm telling you is true, then this is where it will come from. So we are looking at Supernova 1987A as a catalyst for unleashing the power of the seven seals upon the earth and setting a time frame of between now and the year 2000 to 2002. And who knows? I said, well, nobody told me that. Well, yes, they did. Because the scientists told you something's going to happen. Well, they said that, but that's not, that's, I'm telling you, I'm about to take you step by step into the book of Revelation through seal, 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 and match it up with everything that's happened over your head right now. So the book matches beautifully. And if you just give me five minutes more, and then we'll, we'll go on, and, and, then, and then we'll come back, and I'll, I'll share this other thing with you, and then we'll be out of here. But the first question, and I'm just setting this up for beginning next week, the first question 
that arises concerning this phenomena is who is worthy to open the seals. In other words, where will the energy originate? So we can look at these ancient words and then consider what will be the form of the energy which our present day scientists refer to as light? What will be the form of that energy? The scientists have told us, and you've got it documented, that something's going to happen. This supernova, the debris is going to hit this gas, it's going to explode, there's going to be light, there's going to be magnetic fields coming down upon the Earth between now and 2000. What will be the form of it? We have seen the symbol of Pineal. We have seen the symbol of Leo. We have matched Leo with Daniel in the lion's den and the fornix. We have matched the pineal gland as the seventh chakra, the seventh seal. It is supernova 1987A. We've seen the discovery of Dr. George Gatewood of Baltimore, the seventh planet. We found that in the material on page 88 in the constellation Leo, then Leo being the symbol for the pineal gland, the domicile of the sun. And who then is worthy? Where is this guy? In other words, what I'm saying to you is something happens inside of your head. Something is going to happen. This meditation, if you're doing it, is going to cause the fire energy inside of you to hit that, and it's going to light, and you're going to be prepared for what's going to come down upon this earth. And then this fire energy, which is the scientists are telling us about it now, is going to hit the center circle in supernova 1987A. So who is worthy? Where is it going to come from? Are we right in all of the assumptions we're making of these mythological symbols that were written so many thousands of years ago? Am I right? Where is it going to come from? What does it have to do with the pineal, with Gatewood, with the discoveries, with Leo, with Daniel? Who is already to open that seal as this light starts to fire in supernova 1987? Just look for me, and this is the last thing we're going to do today. Look for me at page 1005. Look for me, look with me at Revelation chapter 5. And in chapter 5, and I want you to, what, what I'm telling you is I am identifying supernova 1987A with Leo, the pineal gland, the lion. Huh? I am matching supernova 1987A with Leo, the pineal gland, the lion. Revelation chapter 5. And if you would look at verse 5, and one of the elders said, Behold, the Lion of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. Who is going to loose the seven seals upon the planet Earth? Leo, the Lion, the pineal gland of the brain, supernova 1987A. Just as the scientists have said, just as the Bible says, the power will come from the power of the lion. And the lion is the seventh, the lion is the pineal, the lion is the single eye, the lion is supernova 1987A. Is it a coincidence to you? Is it not interesting to you that the scientists have said that this power, this fire, is starting now. And on page 91 of your stuff, it has already started. And so we'll go horse by horse, seal by seal, and I will bring to your very life the opening of the seven seals and document it scientifically with what is being said by the scientists all over the country today. And as you can see, you can look up with your eyes. And then in 2000, and I'll tell you something, as this light starts to glow brighter and brighter and brighter, you'll be, you'll be able to see it, and people will tell you, did you hear about that light up in the sky? You'll go, and you'll go next door, and your friends will, hey, did you read about that light up in the sky? And then you'll see Leo, Ooh, the lion of Judah, has prevailed. The book is open, and the seals are on fire. And this is what we have waited for all of our lives. The coming of the light, the coming of the new millennium. Behold, all things have become new. It's exciting.
And you ain't, as uh, who was it, Jimmy Durante, years ago, and you ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you. We'll see you. Bye-bye.